Welcome back, friends and neighbors. Today is September 1st. In 1939, the German army, under Hitler's orders, invaded Poland. Also, at the same time, a couple weeks later, um, the Soviet Union invaded the Poles on the opposite side because um, Hitler and Stalin agreed to the Molotov Pact where they would split Poland in two. So we're starting our World War II rifles series right now. So, and the first one we're going to start with, with is Germany. This is the K-98. Some people like to refer to it as the K-98K, and I know I've seen it in that way. It just doesn't make sense. The K-98 is a shortened version, rifle version, of the Gravera 98 from World War I. Probably the best bolt-action rifle ever designed, probably next to the 1903. This one right here is a ZF-41 scoped sniper version and it is original except for the scope itself. The mounts, the stock is original, um, the gun is original of course. It was original sniper rifle which is hard to find um, when you find everything matching because they ditch these. This scope here was very limited in its use. Um, it was better than iron sights at three, four hundred yards, um, but anything past really a hundred yards, it's useless. Um, again, it has sunshade on it. It, ha it is adjustable. You can see here with the stock is originally cut right here for it, and we'll go another close up in there. This is a 1943 dated rifle. It still has all its eagles intact, and we'll show that in a little bit more here in a minute. It is functional, of course, I am a reenactor, as you know, and it is empty. empty. And we all know how mouths are like. So let's talk about why they call it the K-98K and why I can't stand that. <laughs> German language. K is carbine. 98 is the model of the gun. And K after it is uh, Schultz or short. So this is a carbiner 98 short. That makes no damn sense whatsoever. It's a K98 carbine. Uh, standard, what we would call down standard rifle, like 18 inch, 20 inch barrel, something like that. A carbine today, to us today is 16 inches. Um, or in the U.S. military, it's 14 and a half. So anyway, we're going to talk about this rifle, a little bit about its history. Um, this design was finalized, I believe, in 1933. Um, this is a period correct scope and mount, like I said. It's original. It's not one of these made rifles. The only thing that's a reproduction on here is the scope itself. And even the reproduction scope runs three, four hundred dollars So the original one would be into the thousands. Um, sight this thing in. It's kind of funny. I hadn't got it sighted in right where I wanted. It is left and lower to the right uh, than where I want it to be at. But, and it kind of eliminates the um, your uh, your iron sights. So, yeah. And you can still use the iron sight barrel. Um, this is a reproduction sling, of course. Most slings didn't last that long. Uh, this is the takedown model, and we'll, we'll talk about this here in a minute uh, when I take over the camera and we'll do some close ups and stuff like that. So, the K 98 soldier on through all the way after World War II, um, all the way up until the 60s, uh, with Israel of all countries, and we'll do an Israeli K 98 later on, um, and we'll talk about how the Israelis got it. Um, this is the first in our rifle series. The next one, we're going to do two in the same day. So, this is the Germans. Uh, first, of course, because they started World War II, and then next will be the Polish K-98 version, if you didn't know about that. The Polish had, also had a K-98 version, so we'll talk about that. So, while I go ahead and set this up, go ahead and pause it, and we'll get back. Alright, so now we're set up to do a little closer flyby here, and we are going to check out the K-98. So, that's just my preference here about the K98 and people calling it K98K. It's right, supposedly, 
I just disagree with it. it to me, it's just um, doesn't work too well. So here we go. We got the stock here, and I'll tell you a story about this rifle here in a minute. So when you fly by here, we do we get the model 98 right there. Most Germans will say model 98. Some will say K98. We got our serial number right there. Our eagle still intact there. We got our acceptance eagle there. And another eagle right there. And you see the original scope mount there. And then you'll see the replacement scope ring, basically. The original cut to the stock here. So you can slide that on and off. Um, and then we'll go all the way rest it out. So this rifle was a... Um, And then there's a good place to scope mounts and stuff. This is uh, manufactured. The manufacturing uh, who manufactured the Mausers are already up here. There's another Eagle. This is AR. Uh, the date here is 43. So this rifle was made in 1943. At the height of the German power in World War II, I guess you could say, it was 43. Um, here's your little release right here. That's your sunshade right here. Uh, your dials to dial it in. This and that. Um, how many uh, meters you want to go up to and all that. So yeah, you have to loosen some things up, dial it in correctly. You got a little sunshade here. It pops out a little bit more too. It, it edges a little bit to it. Uh, it did have its own case at one time. I, did, I didn't buy the case. I didn't feel a need to it. Because uh, I mounted it on there and I left it on the rifle. Um, before this, this gun shot extremely well for a military rifle with the age it has. Um, it's a nice rifle. All K98s are worth even this was a sporterized version that I picked up for two hundred dollars. When I got it, I realized there was something here extra on here. So I started doing some research on it, and I realized that it was one of the rifles that shot extremely well and that was picked out for sniper service. So it had the original scope mount on here, and it was in a sporterized stock. The original stock was sporterized. So, anyway. I actually found a sniper shot stock on eBay. Paid a couple hundred dollars for it because these are hard to find. So it's not matching 100%. The bolt matches, the gun matches. Um, a lot of these parts here are stamp parts that have been that are not serialized, so that didn't really matter. Um, the stock doesn't match because it's got 908 in there, and the, and the number up here is eight or 8848. So that's the serial number on the gun, actually. So, again, it shoots fun. It, sh it shoots great. It's a fun gun to shoot. Um, of course, you're not going to take this bad boy out and shoot 100 rounds out at the gun range because your shoulder's going to feel it. You'll probably take it out and shoot 30, 40 rounds and then put it up until next time. Of course, this is a reproduction sh uh, sling, and that's how they've done it. This is your bolt disassembly hole right here tool. Basically, how you take the bolt apart. Um, if you've seen one K98 you, or one Model 98, they all you got your stripper clip bridge right here, well, that, which was a pretty good idea because of the long eye scope relief is what they call this. Um, the, the Germans were always ahead on optics, and they always have been on optics uh, for their military, and usually have great optics. This was one of the few failures um, even the back of my Gewehr 43 or the G43 uh, German rifle that I did a, before I got rid of it or traded it off um, it was set up with a sniper with a ZF4 scope um, of course you know later on we've seen where they'll have turret mounts on here and then they'll have the big ZF5 or whatever else I can't remember the exact designation but they'll have the big like 4x32 scopes on there or 3 by 9 by 40 scopes or whatever they were um, I don't think they were adjustable power but they you know they've had the scopes there 
where they would click in, lock in, like Enemy at the Gate. Have you ever seen Enemy at the Gate and uh, and the German Sniper in that, played by Ed Harris, which was a good movie. Not 100% accurate, but it was a pretty good movie for what it is and what they did. I think they did a fairly decent job uh, from a reenacting standpoint, from a historical uh, uh, point, too, because the, the Germans say that um, Ed Harris' character was never there. So, and of course, the Soviet city was. So, um, and we know how the World War II Soviet propaganda machine was. So, anyway, back to this rifle here. So, this was a Bubba rifle that I restored back. I got lucky and found a complete um, stock. I had the parts on hand. Uh, I did order the um, from Samco Global. I got the scope and the mount here, or the ring. I guess I will call it a ring for a lack of a better term. And then the mount itself was already part of the rear sight. So when I got the rifle, I, re I didn't realize what that was. And then when I started researching it, I said, oh, crap, this is an original mount for a sniper, for a scope. And, uh, and of course, there's other varies of scopes, like the uh, ZF-4 scope mount and rail that you can put on here. That's scope rail on the mount here that you can put on there. But that wouldn't be entirely accurate. So yes, these are hard to find, hard to come by. Uh, Military Arms Channel did a um, series on his where his was immaculate. Um, when they're immaculate like that, then uh, I have to question whether they're real. Because very real, real sniper rifles that have survived are like this one that are mismatched. Or in museums that were captured by the Russians or the U.S. or British troops. And, and that are in museums that are all... Because what would happen at the end of World War II, especially against the Russians, where so many German snipers were employed against, um, the, the Russians and even most GI and Allied troops would execute a sniper on sight because, you know, they definitely decimated troops and all that. So we're going to take a look at the other side here. <clears throat> all right, here. So here we go, we got our cross light AC. The Germans liked the mark, the Nazis marked everything with the Eagle, Waffen stamp. Um, I think if we look hard enough, we'll find one on here. Um, that's why the barrel was also stamped here. More markings there. Um, approval. So there's your sight, your top handguard, um, lock, your bayonet lug right there. Front sight, it's missing the uh, protector on there. Um, that's something that usually, as I find as a reenactor, I take off simply because um, if I go in through the woods or something like that and it gets knocked off, then I've lost a $10 part and it's rather just easy to take it off and keep it at the house. That's how the, uh, the other side of the sling looks. And it's stock, and this is a laminate stock, as you can tell. So if you look through there, you see the lamination in it. Um, I had one um, that I'll show later on the very first Russian captured K-98 that I bought way back in the 90s. Um, I took the stock and I sanded all the slack off of it. Um, and then you could really see the lamination process in there. And it's got some gorgeous wood on this. Of course, the Germans had to laminate stocks because they were on short supply of everything, including wood. So they would reuse wood make laminate stocks and um and use super glue so um especially on the back of these butt plates here you can take the butt plate off and this is a sniper butt plate because it's the way it's got the design on it and you can take it off and you can see the gap there that's normal uh, right there and you can take this plate off and you can see where they sandwiched every layer of wood together glued it together and then machined it out for the rifle stock the Germans over-engineered the rifle stock, but these things were great. These are great rifles to have, uh, especially the K98s. Now we'll get into like if you talk about the M48, that's a completely different rifle and not as the same as this. So, um, and it's an eight millimeter Mauser. We'll do. We're going to do a Mauser cartridge um, information here next um, in a series of videos. So we're going to do the first two. I've already done the Soviet, um, or the Model 91 Nagants, or 9130 Nagants. 
So we'll do this next. I've already done the Japanese rifles, so we'll start getting into, and I've done a Garan. So we'll start doing more World War II rifles. I got a lot of different models of Carcanos to do. Um, and I had my Carcanos before they were just imported here. So um, just remember that. So anyway, this video went just a tad over a bit what I really wanted it to do, but there's a lot to talk about about K98s. They're great rifles. I can't mention that enough. So in next, this will be the first video it drops for the for uh, the World War II series. The next one will be the Polish um, version of the K98, which is an AN. The, Pol the Poles had many versions of it. So anyway, um, remember, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out. Um, and like always, folks, guys and gals, friends and neighbors, it costs nothing to be nice to one another. And in the way this world's going, we need to be nice to one another. And we'll catch you next time.